Hey everyone, it's George Crows with another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I'm glad you could join me today. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, you're probably seeing the Toronto Raptors hat. You're probably seeing the Toronto Raptors uh, championship uh, hoodie that I'm wearing right now. And this is, I'm recording this actually on Friday. So there's a big game tonight. I don't know who's going to win. I'm cheering for the Raptors. But hopefully... Um, you're watching this and they won the series, but if not, that's terrible. But I'm excited for the game tonight. And uh, it's nice to look forward um, to things like basketball. I, I miss it a great deal. And today I just wanted to, to share a couple ideas, share some thoughts with you. And as always, I appreciate your time. And uh, I was thinking a lot this morning. Uh, I worked with a group in Massachusetts and uh, they were really awesome. And it was it was really emotional. Uh, people were crying during my presentation and I started crying because they were crying. And I feel a lot of people are, you know, very emotional and uh, understandably so with all the uncertainty in the world. And a lot of my work has to do with innovation, right? And I'm asked about like kind of looking forward to the future. What are some of the things that I see as trends coming up? Uh, what are some of the new things that we could be doing? And for me, when I talk about the idea of innovation, I really talk about it as something that is doing about doing new and better things. And I think what's really crucial, it's not just about new things, it's about doing things better, but it also can be better in really kind of going deep into the work that you're already doing. I think a lot of times we don't see innovation uh, in things that we've been doing for a while. And I think a lot of times in schools and districts, one of the issues that we get into is we are looking to jump onto the new thing before we got good at the old thing. And it's just like constant initiatives and changes. And I think, you know, in a time of uncertainty and a time where we, we, we want to be able to kind of gravitate and hold on to things that we know that really help us. I think it's important that we look at the things that we already know are really important and get better at them. And I think there's a lot of innovation in those spaces as well. And I think that's, I've noticed like a lot of emotions lately. I've had them, uh, a lot of educators I've worked with have them and struggling. So I think, how do we look at some of the things that we do? and hold on to them during such a time of uncertainty where schools are all over the place from remote, face-to-face -face, and hybrid. So I was actually looking back at an article uh, that I had written previously in 2018, and it's titled, Three Things in Education That Have Stayed the Same and How They've Changed. So I think there's some things that we do in education that are gonna be relevant 80 years from now. And they were relevant 80 years ago. And I, I say this all the time is that relationships were the most important thing in education 50 years ago and 50 years from now, it's gonna actually be even more so. And it's something that we need to really kind of focus on. So what I'm gonna talk about today is just these three things and just kind of give you some context and why they matter. And maybe there's something for you to focus on, whether you're uh, teaching a classroom, whether you work with schools, whether you're an administrator, uh, whether your parent is, how do we focus on, you know, the things that are really important right now, but how has their context changed? And the first one and the one that always centers the work that I do is really thinking about relationships and, and why they matter. And one of the things I've noticed quite a bit lately is I've talked to a lot of students, actually, mostly the high school age, uh, sharing uh, I've heard from them sharing how excited they were when school got canceled when coronavirus happened and uh, they were excited about it. And then maybe two, three days in, they're like, this sucks. This is terrible. I want to be back. And they didn't actually um, realize how much they might have taken things for granted. I think that's all of us. It's not just students. I think it's adults too, taking things for granted um, that, you know, missing things that we might have complained about at some point. And so really focusing on relationships and what they mean, like I said, they, they've always been important. But when we look at um, what kids and our students were missing, it was that connection. And I think what a lot of people have realized in the last little while and something that I think is I've been talking about for a long time because it was a real shift for me 
is how do we use technology to enhance face-to-face -face relationships instead of replace them. And this is actually something I learned from my, my, my parents because uh, before my father passed away, he asked for an iPad. And he wanted an iPad so badly because all of his kids lived all over Canada and he wanted to be able to see them all the time. And so he, he wanted to learn FaceTime immediately and he saw that was really important. And I know um, for me, a lot of the conversations that I've been having, I've been doing a lot more FaceTime than phone calls lately. And just being able to see people and to connect uh, in a time of isolation, seeing how we're actually connected with one another. And, and understanding that a lot of students, when we, you've heard comments about, you know, how disconnected kids are uh, using technology. I think that there's a realization that a lot of kids actually use it to build connections, to connect with people that they might not actually, um, they might not actually know if it wasn't for technology otherwise. So for example, let's say you grew up in a small town and you were in a class and you didn't really, you know, make any friends uh, in that space. A lot of kids have, you know, gone online and have connected with, you know, kids with similar interests. And I, I think as an adult, I did the same thing when I first became a principal. Um, you know, there's there's a limit of a, amount of principals in my district. So I went on Twitter and I, I learned to connect with them. And I, I think just having that opportunity to connect with people in a different way um, allows us to really kind of, you know, think about who we are and, you know, what we're passionate about. And I, I think what I'm seeing right now and I'm so amazingly impressed by is how educators are using uh, Twitter to connect and build those relationships. And uh, one of the things I saw this morning in Massachusetts was all these teachers holding up signs, connecting with their kids, telling them how much they missed them and how much, you know, uh, how much that mattered. And, and seeing that, yeah, we can get lost in the technology. We can sometimes forget there's a person on the other side of the screen. But I think, you know, thinking about relationships, obviously we appreciate them on a totally different level that we haven't been able to see each other face to face. But how do you use them with technology to actually build and connect and, and to really identify? And I think we can learn a lot from our students in ways that they actually do that as well. And, and really, that, that is always going to matter. That's always going to connect with people. That's always going to be um, something they do. And like one little thing that I do when I do Zoom calls or sessions is I actually um, I, I just spend time talking, chatting. Again, this morning with Massachusetts, we I was doing a, a keynote on, um, on innovation and education and why it matters. But before we even started, people were coming into the room and the superintendent and I, he's from the Boston area, I'm a big fan of the Raptors and the game is tonight. We actually just sat and talked. We just talked in front of people and shared some of our thoughts and how excited we were for the game. And I think um, a lot of times when we get into these spaces, we get right to work, we get right to the education. And I think it's nice just to, you know, just to talk and those outside interests. And we use technology for that. And I felt that, um, it connected me with people in a different way. And I think maybe that's why people connected with me this morning is because they saw that I'm not just some guy who speaks on education. I'm a person who has interests and, you know, uh, outside of education as well. So really relationships are going to be always important, but the way we can create them will continuously evolve. And we need to uh, take advantage of that, you know, not only for ourselves, but for our kids. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about, and it's something that I think is kind of uh, gets pushed aside too often, is the importance of content. And when you think of content, a lot of people talk about innovation and like creation and doing all these amazing things. And I think that is, is great. I think it's really important. I think in my school experience, I didn't have as many opportunities um, to do that because for example, uh, this might sound ridiculous, but we made um, a basketball commercial when I was a kid. And it was one of the coolest experiences that I had. I love putting it together. I love doing it, but I'll tell you, it took like three weeks. Like it was forever. I, I don't even remember how we edited it. We like had like double VCRs. 
I can't even remember the software that we use, like, cause there, it, I don't think it was even a computer. It was just like a weird way to edit it. And that same video uh, could probably take us 10 minutes now, right? And so it wasn't that my teachers didn't want us to create, but <laughs> the amount of time it took to create something when I was a kid was really hard. So it, it, school felt really content focused. And I think it was just because of a lack of opportunity. And so now where we have all this time to create and share ideas and share thoughts and, you know, kind of be really participatory, I think we also have to really understand the importance of content and, and really looking into it. And I've seen a lot of times, you know, um, I think adults are guilty of this too, where we share like, for example, a clickbaity title, but don't actually read the content and share that. And we agree with the premise, but we don't actually dig into it and, and kind of go through that. And I think um, there is so much content, but it doesn't mean that we're actually looking at it any deeper. It's not, it doesn't mean that we're actually taking advantage of kind of reading it and getting into that. And I, I still think creation is super important. I think it's really powerful. But John Medina, he wrote Brain Rules. And he shared this quote, and I, it really resonated with me. And I don't think it's in his book, but I saw him saying a keynote. He said, paraphrase, that creation without consumption is the equivalent of playing the air guitar. You might know the motions, but you don't know how to actually play. And so I think that in education, this this, this kind of overemphasis on creation can be hurtful that we might actually be able to go through the motions, but we don't actually understand the content. So I think, you know, as we're going to this, how do we make content in a way where, uh, you know, people will dig in, understand it. And then when we create it, we actually connect those ideas. We actually go further. Uh, Thomas Friedman says, uh, the world doesn't care what you know, it only cares about what you can do with what you know. And I think, that part is really important, but it, it, it also means that we have to know, we have to understand it and dig into content. And I think this is true um, at any level. And then the last one is having a focus on lifelong learning. When I was a kid, educators talked about lifelong learning all the time. And, it, and I feel sometimes that in education, uh, like we think as a generation, we might be the first one to ever talk about this stuff. And I think that term specifically reminds me that people have been advocating for growth in education forever, right? And I think that if we look back at different stages, I think a lot of times we can say like, oh, education hasn't moved quickly enough. And then, and then I think on the other hand, you see a lot of progression, you see a lot of development. And I think that notion of being a lifelong learner um, is something that I heard when I was a kid and it's something we talk about uh, to this day. And I think it's, it's really important, but what does it mean? And one thing I've said, and if you've been listening to this podcast, I, I keep saying that 2020 is ultimately the year of the learner, whether you like it or not, everyone's adapting, everyone's figuring out new stuff. And I think people are, are, are doing it sometimes out of necessity and sometimes out of growth. People are seeing that there's some new opportunities that we didn't realize were there before. Uh, here's like a really simple example, what I've seen with educators. A lot of educators have surprisingly seen some students thrive in a remote learning situation where some of their students who thrived in a face-to-face -face situation aren't doing so well. And so the questions that they're asking is, okay, well, how come these kids are doing well now and these kids are struggling? And what are some of the things that we can do to ensure that no matter the space, all of these kids thrive, all of these kids have opportunities. And really um, that takes an evolution of what we do in our practice. That takes a, a constant focus on, on how we learn and how we actually develop. I think that, as I said earlier, that concept is is old it's been around for as long as i've been alive and i've you know been involved in education as either a student or an educator or as a teacher i think the access the opportunity that we have is evolved so quickly and i also think that the some of the things that we use now are easier than they were when we were kids 
And I know this sounds weird, but I actually used to think, I actually think that I was way better with technology when I was like eight or nine years old than I am now. And here's, here's what I mean by that. When we had an Apple IIc growing up and we thought it was like just awesome. And having this Apple IIc, there's not much you could do with it compared to what you can do with it, with it now. I don't even remember if I had a mouse to be honest with you, but I remember like doing programming and I can't remember the programming language. It was like, you'd write 10 and then you put a little instruction and then 20 and then 30 and you'd have these little things and you get the computer to do something. Uh, you could print and remember the zzz, zzz, that printer with the little, the little holes and you know, you, you kind of pull off and, and I, I could do some really cool things with that computer. Uh, I cannot remember how to do any of the stuff that I did with that computer now. And, and then you go back to, and now you go move forward to technology. Now people don't realize this, but if you own an iPhone, uh, people kind of don't realize this when they open the box, there's no instruction manual. They actually make it so intuitive that you don't need an instruction manual to figure it out. And it tells you instructions as you go, there's like two or three buttons and it's like press one of them until something turns on. And then you just go, right? And technology has become so accessible in our world today that it doesn't mean we're actually using it in a meaningful way. It just means that it's easier. And so I think that it's great that technology is becoming so much easier to use, so much easier than when I was a kid. But I think that means we have to make sure that we we do better stuff with it. We grow more from it. We create better things from it. And so if you look at, for me, kind of growing up as an educator using technology all the time, I think one of the things that's been beneficial is using technology um, in the sense that it's not just using technology, but technology always changes, right? You're using uh, Microsoft Word and then one day the program changes. You're using this and stuff changes, buttons move around, buttons change, uh, wording and language changes, you get updates all the time. And you have to continuously actually figure it out. You have to figure out the new thing on the fly as you go. I've been in presentations where I'll, for example, talk about how to use Google Forms in meaningful ways. And I'll do one on Thursday, and then I'll do one on Friday, and there's an update on Thursday night. And all of a sudden, in front of a group of people with a totally new uh, interface that I have to figure out on the fly to, to share some of those ideas I shared the day before. And so I think that we have to continuously see ourselves as learners and that things will change. How do we adapt to them? And when people ask me this question, hey, like in education five years from now, you know, what do you see is the big thing? I guarantee you five years ago, nobody would have said Zoom, nobody. They might have said, you know, interactive classrooms or, you know, remote learning. They wouldn't have saw Zoom. They wouldn't have saw what happened last year. And five years, five years from now, who knows? Like who knows what's going to happen? But here's what I know, and I think this is important. No matter what happens and what comes our way, I'm going to be able to figure it out. And I think that's why we focus on this, this idea of lifelong learning and why it is so crucial to the work that we do in education. Things will change. Things will come our way that we don't know. But are we in a space and are we in a mindset that we know we can figure out and actually do something incredible with it? So these are things that... I, th I think, you know, talking about relationships, talking about the importance of content, talking about the importance of lifelong learning. These are things that have always been important and they always will be important. What we have to realize is how they will evolve and do we evolve with them? And I think that if we do that, we'll always be good. So thank you for taking the time to listen. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you're watching this after a Raptors win. Uh, but either way, I just love watching basketball. So I the, wish the best for both teams. But I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for all you do. Take care. Bye-bye.